Hi, I'm Kelly with Ryan's RV in Everett, Washington. Today we're going to try to do a 40 to 45 minute walkthrough video in 10 minutes. I'm going to move really fast. This is not a complete walkthrough video. This is not everything you need to know. But if you want the real short version and you're a quick study or a freshen up, here we go. You ready? All right. First thing you're going to do when you pull into the campsite is get your RV totally level. Okay, or at least level enough. So you'll notice here I'm up on some RV Lego bricks, these orange blocks. They stack up like Legos. Uh, the front end of the coach was too too far down, so we ran it up on some blocks, set the emergency brake. I'm level enough for now. You want to make sure that if you were an egg and you were in a frying pan, you're somewhere toward the center of the pan and not off on the corner. That's level enough. Front to back is more important for the refrigerator. Side to side is just for your comfort. Okay? We've already got the slide out. out. Um, we're going to do hookups really quick. Every Class C that you're going to find has a power cord that's a 30 amp power cord. That's a three pronged power cord. Uh, most of them need to plug into an outlet inside the compartment that they come out of when you're not plugged into the uh, power source like a, like a campsite. Uh, and that is so you can get power from the generator when you're going down the road or not plugged into an AC source. Okay, that's one. Two, you've got water fill. Your water fills will either look like this or you'll have a white box and it's usually white on the outside of the compartment that says uh, fresh water only. Uh, you'll have a city water hookup and a tank fill. The city water hookup is to use pressure from the hose. That's what ours is here where it says city fill. The tank fill is just literally you're putting your hose in your tank, you're adding water. That's what ours is here that says tank fill. On our motorhome, sometimes the tank fill is on the passenger side. The city fill is always on the driver's side. Fuel. Thing you need to know about fuel, it's unleaded fuel only. These are not diesel motorhomes. You need to use 87 octane at minimum. If you're doing a mountain pass or towing, you'll get better fuel economy. Your RV will like you better with 89 octane or higher. Never, ever, ever use 85 octane that's available in places like California. Your dump station. You've got a cap that twist locks on and off. When you take that cap off, don't have your hand underneath because it's quite often you'll get a few, few drops of something that you don't want on your hand. Um, you've always got at least two valves. You should have a gray tank valve and a black valve. Easy way to tell them apart, the gray tank valve is always narrower than the black tank valve. You know, inch and a half valve versus three inch or two inch, you can usually tell them apart. The black valve is always bigger. Take your sewer hose. Your sewer hose has an end on it like this. It's going to lock into position. Make sure that you get it thoroughly locked because you don't want it coming off uh, once you pull the handles. Take the business end to get it secure in a hole. Once the business end is secure in a hole, you can open your black tank valve, your black tank will dump. Uh, it takes 30 seconds to three minutes. You'll hear it, you'll see the hose moving. When it's done, close your black tank, open your gray tank. That's your sink and your shower water. Your gray tank is gonna flush out all that muck that you just put in there from the black tank, get the hose a little cleaner for you. When that quits moving and you don't hear it anymore, another 30 seconds to three minutes, close the gray tank, take the hose off, shake it out over the hole, take a hose, rinse it out if you need to, put the hose ends together, put your hose away, you should be done. Always make sure your storage compartments are fully locked and secured before you're going down the road, as well as anything in a big storage compartment needs to be secure. If I've got a bowling ball right here, sitting on, sitting on some towels, and I hit the brakes really hard, that bowling ball is going to be down the middle aisle of my motorhome. So whatever's in here needs to be secure, just like it would need to be secure if you were inside the coach. Our awning happens to be out right now. This is a power awning. If you have a manual awning, you might want to think about upgrading your motorhome. There's some new ones out, they're a whole lot easier. Come see me, we'll hook you up. If you put an electric awning up, all you do, you, you press the awning in button. It's usually right inside the door, someplace where you can watch the awning to make sure everything's going okay. You just hold it on in until the awning is all the way inside. And when it stops, let go. That's all there is to it. Out is the same way, just make sure there's nothing for the awning to hit, because they do come out quite a ways from the motorhome. This is your hot water heater. You don't want to lean up against it when it's been on, you can get burnt. You don't want to lean a chair up against it, same thing. This is your furnace. If you're going to be using your furnace, you don't want something leaning up against it. It's going to get burnt. A uh, good way to get a really, really cheap tattoo. Uh, your propane tanks, now if you need to get propane on the road, are right there. You can't fill it yourself, you'll pull into a gas station that's got propane or a campground or uh, a truck stop. Most big truck stops have propane. Uh, that's where you do that. You see this side's up on blocks as well. There, there's some more there. Remember to adjust your mirrors before you go. Remember to watch tail swing. Tail swing's the big killer with motorhomes. 
That means the side that you are turning away from, your back end swings out, pivots, you can get damaged. For more information on that, see our longer version of this video. Just inside the door, we've got a battery disconnect switch. That's a very common one. Sometimes they're electric. You want it on while you're using the coach. Don't turn it off while you're on your trip unless you're getting on a ferry and you have to shut everything down. Your awning switch. This is your power converter. Sometimes these are under the bed or under a cabinet. You can usually see them. That's your breakers, your fuses. If you're tripping something more than once in your trip, something's wrong, seek professional help. You have two switches, typically in a doorway. First one's a porch light, second one's an overhead light when you come in in case it's dark. Uh, this one, we've got our TV antenna booster switch right here that needs to be on if you're going to try to use the TV antenna. I don't recommend that when you're camping. Take some DVDs or visit Redbox. This is a GFCI breaker. All of your outlets that you can plug into for the entire coach run through this GFCI breaker. If you lose power to your outlets, hit the reset button. Okay, you got a fire extinguisher just inside the entry door. Coming in. TV DVD player, uh, only work with AC power. We have our remotes we keep up here above the door. Uh, you, have to, you have to be plugged into AC or have the generator running to operate that. Repair conditioner and microwave. You have to have the generator running or be plugged into AC power to operate them. Everything else will run on battery power and propane until you're out of battery power or propane. Stove is propane only. To light the stove, simply turn the burner to light. Spin the piezo igniter. We have flame. To light the stove, I'm sorry, the oven, uh, turn the pilot on, press the button, open the door. While holding the button in, clear at the back of the oven in the center. There's a pilot light. You have to light that with a match or a striker. Uh, lighter sticks work really well. Once it's lit, hold it in for 15 seconds. You can let go. Turn it on. The oven will light up. Your control panel is really important. You'll always have a test button. When you press the test button, lights will come on to tell you what's going on with the rest of your tanks. Uh, like most motorhomes, this one registers your black water, which is your sewage, your gray water, which is your sink and your shower, your fresh water, which is the water you're going to put in your tank and take with you going down the road to use your sink, your shower, your toilet, and your battery level. Uh, water pump switch. If you're going to use water out of your water tank, it must be pressurized. You turn it on here. Water heater. If you want hot water to take a shower or dishes, turn that on 20 minutes in advance. Generator start. You can use going down the road, and you will need to to keep the coach cool in the summer if you need your air conditioner. You start it up by pressing and holding the start button until the generator starts up, and then you can turn it off. This hour meter just says how many hours are on the generator. Remember to check the oil no less than every 20 hours. Uh, that should be explained to you per the model of your generator when you get a real walkthrough. Your slide-out switches right here um, in this model, they vary. They put them in crazy places. Sometimes you'll find them in a cupboard, but they'll usually say be labeled slide-out switch. Some coaches, the engine needs to be turned off. Some coaches, the engine needs to be running. With Winnebago's, the engine needs to be running. All motorhomes require that the parking brake is set. Some Class A's, you have to have the seat all the way forward. They'll be labeled if that's the case. Sofas. Sofas all turn, all turn into beds quite easily. There's usually a latch. This one happens to be right here. I pull it out, and now it's a bed. Overhead beds. Uh, this guy is a two-part cushion. Hard on the bottom, soft on top. They're queen width. They're longer than a queen. They can sleep two adults quite comfortably. Ladder comes off, drops into place. You can get up and down without climbing on the upholstery. Microwave. You'll notice my microwave lights are on. That's the easiest way of telling if I have AC power. If my microwave lights aren't on, I don't have AC power. It's that simple. Uh, figure out what's going on with the pole. Find your breaker or something's wrong. Refrigerator. Refrigerators, uh, the modern refrigerators, you should be able to turn them to auto. They are two-way refrigerators, meaning that they will run on 110 power or they will run on propane. They require a little bit of battery power to tell them what to do because the brain works on 12 volt power. But the main cooling uh, for these works either on propane or AC power. These are much slower than your refrigerators at home. Allow a minimum of eight hours for them to get cold. If they're full of warm food, it can take a, take a whole day. RV tables. So anytime you see a booth dinette like this, it will turn into it will turn into a bed. For this one, it's quite simple. Lift this up. Take the pole up. Drop the table into place. Steal the back cushion. Take your two accessory cushions. I'm going to tuck those seat belts down behind the cushions. These end cushions come off, snort front. That's a nice bed for two adults. This is our climate control system. If you want it hotter or cooler, you do it here. It's labeled real easy. Turn it to cool. Set the thermostat. The air conditioner comes on. That's a nice day today, so I'm not going to turn on the heat, but it works the same way. Turn it to heat. Set the thermostat, it will come on. These work much like a marine head. 
there's no water in the bowl when it's at rest or very little water to add water you slightly depress the foot pedal at the bottom of the toilet with the water pump on or being hooked up to city water I will get water coming into the bowl uh, if you're going to go to number one you don't need to do that just do what you need to do flush the toilet when you're done if you're going to do more than that you need to add enough water to cover up whatever deposit you're going to leave in the toilet remember to use lots of water use extra water and be very conservative on toilet paper only use RV toilet paper do not do not do not use Charmin please it will screw up your holding tanks and every time you dump either use liquid chemical that's measured out or you can buy these handy convenient drop-ins just like for your dishwasher open the valve drop them down the toilet you're done that'll help keep the odor down help keep, keep things digested well in your holding tanks so you don't get build up your RV shower you get six minutes of hot water give or take you have a shut off on the shower head the water gets scalding hot from the water tank or from the water heater once the water heater has been on for 20 minutes you can come in and set your temperature um, obviously please hold this in the shower while you're doing this not in the hallway uh, once you get up to temperature you can turn that dial that will shut the water off you can get in soap up rinse off shave do whatever you got to do rinse off again you only get six minutes of hot water remember use it quick use it wisely back here you've got a carbon monoxide that's typically in the in the bedroom if that goes off it's, you're picking up exhaust fumes from something close the bedroom window latch it open a window on this side of the coach get some ventilation going through here that'll shut up it's just like a smoke detector wave a towel in front of it if you need to you always have an emergency exit in the bedroom pull the two handles kick the window out the chance of needing to do that aren't very good but that's how they work this is the propane detector if this goes off that's serious that means you got propane in here turn off your propane and figure out what's going on maybe somebody left the oven on Figure out what's going on or don't turn your propane back on. Uh, propane can cause this entire motor home to blow up and put glass 300 yards in every direction. Let's not do that. Oh, and the fridge, if the, if the gas light flashes, you need to turn it off. Wait 10 seconds, turn it back on. Should get a green light. If that light starts flashing again, you're doing something wrong. Uh, you should probably call whoever you rented it from. Leave the doors closed for three or four hours. Let it try to get cool. Uh, but call in if, you, if you're having a problem. Tell swing. If you don't understand the tell swing, please watch our longer video, the 40 minute version, or talk to someone who can explain it to you. It's the number one cause of damage for rental motorhomes. Um, re very rarely does anybody get hurt, but the motorhomes look pretty scarred when they get caught on the back end. Stopping distance. Increase your stopping distance at least three times. So if you're following somebody about as close as you would be in a car and they slam on their brakes. I guarantee you, you can't stop this 11,000 pounds as fast as they can stop their 3,000 pound car. It's got great brakes, doesn't matter, it's heavy. Increase your distance, especially if the roads are wet, especially if conditions are bad. Side winds, very dangerous for motorhomes. Uh, you got a whole lot of sidewall in these coaches. If you're getting blown all over the road, get off the road, you're on a trip. Go have dinner, take a break, stay an extra night someplace. Don't fight the big trucks going down the road that are getting blown all over the place. Safety is more important than that, you're supposed to be on vacation.